<laughs> Good evening, everybody. Good evening. I beat you to it. Good evening. You did. Um, do you guys know how much I love this woman here? Oh, no. I do. I don't think it's wrong for me to say that. Like, sometimes people don't want public display of affection, but, I mean, you should know that, right? Mm -hmm. I don't want to hide that. Um, I love you, too. <laughs> I don't want to leave anybody wondering. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's why I said it anyway. Mm -hmm. Just trying to get an I love you back. Mm -hmm. No, I do. She's pretty amazing. So that's what we're going to do tonight for our Wednesday night study. <laughs> is I'm just going to keep, like I'm starting to do the study, and then I'm just going to say something nice about uh, my wife until no one's listening anymore. Wow, that won't be <laughs> uncomfortable at all. Uh, uh, so we are so glad you're with us. We and um, last week I promised something I didn't do. Yeah, you had a whole lot of notes I last week. And we did not cover. Yeah, we just covered one thing mm -hmm. instead of many things. Mm -hmm. But why well, learn from my mistakes? We're going to cover more things this time. I'd like you to see this. This is, you know, Wednesday night. You know, I don't know what preaching and teaching and the difference and people make all those rules. Um, sometimes Wednesdays are like a sermon. Sometimes they're not. You know, we just try to get into the word and encourage one another. But I, I want you to look at maybe how theologically I will go through a text and that might help you. There's so much mm -hmm. in scripture that's enjoyable to me and mm -hmm. gets you excited. And, and I think one of the strengths of the information age we live in is you can really go deeper with things. Now, you can search the internet and find really terrible things, but we have to be discerning of what's true and not true uh, to be able to determine what sources are more mm -hmm. trustworthy. And I guess I could spend a whole time on that, but um, I hope just kind of I might model that in the things I talk about or the things I highlight. Uh, but the strength is you can have a question with scripture, mm -hmm. one word, one thought, and you can start Googling and find some really cool stuff. Resources that other people didn't have. You know, Some people had, what, a Strong's Concordance? Yeah. Maybe a couple books. Maybe go to the library. Mm -hmm. We can find all kinds of papers written about one word or one yeah. confusing scripture. So it's an exciting time to it live It is in. an exciting And I think about, you mentioned the Strong's Concordance and how a, a friend of mine gave me... Um, uh, you know, an, an old version of Strong's Concordance, huge, big, like that thick and big, big book. Yeah. Gave that to me as a gift after I got saved and how exciting that was to me and how much that opened up the scripture for me mm -hmm. to understand original Greek and Hebrew and a little bit more context um, to the scripture. Yeah. And now, yeah, the fact that Do we... Do you know where that Strong's Concordance is now? It is right here it's underneath actually, our computer. <laughs> it's a big book. That we yep. stack the computer with, it's right? Holding up, yeah. That's a good rem reminder, though. Uh, the more resources we get, instead of more appreciative, we get kind of uh, lazy. Yeah. Oh, I don't want to make you feel bad, but I want you to encourage you guys. Not that you're lazy, but there's resources. Mm -hmm. And so let's get into this before I just spend the whole time talking about <laughs> resources. Uh, we're going to go to different scriptures, and then I'm going to bring the questions I have. Jen, you can bring questions that you have to this. And then uh, just see what we can get out of it. And hopefully I, I would encourage you to get into the word. There's all kinds of different yeah. ways we can do this, but this might be encouraging to some of thank you. Thank you, Lord. So. Lord, I just thank you for tonight. I thank you um, for everyone and anyone who's joining us, um, whether it's right when this airs on Wednesday night or whether it's months and years later, God, I just... Um, just pray that your influence, God, that your blessing would just ripple forth um, just from these this few moments, really, that we're spending together tonight. And I just thank you. Thank you for all the resources that you've given us, Lord. Thank you that you continue um, to just bless us with your wisdom and that your Holy Spirit informs us and causes us to, to grow in our faith. Amen. Amen. I, who, when are you listening to this? This could be an apocalyptic, dystopian future where our currency wow. is discarded beanie babies. And you know, okay, you need 20 to years stay from on now, task. It, could, it could be that. And you're listening. And I want to say, aren't you glad you held on to those beanie babies? I hope it's not beanie babies because <laughs> I did not hold on to beanie babies. Though I know a few friends who are probably going to be thrilled. Well, we don't know where we'll be in the apocalyptic dystopian future. So <laughs> anyway, let's go. The scripture, you want to do that? Yes. There's two people. People are like, get to scripture. Others are like, I want to know more about this Beanie Baby to still be in the future. <laughs> so the goal is we're going to not satisfy either group. So let's get into this. Uh, let's bring it up here. All right. 
John 13. Now, I, mm-hmm. to get me moving forward, I didn't do the first four verses. I keep getting stuck there. There's too much in it. So I just, we're not going to read those. Uh, John, uh, Jesus is speaking. This is the Last Supper. John 13, 5. Then Jesus poured water into the basin and began washing the disciples' feet and wiping them with the towel which he had tied around himself. So mm-hmm. reading this, we're going to be in the little box a lot. So you mm-hmm. got to read this, stay t- pay attention here. I want you to read this yourself mm-hmm. and kind of the questions that come to you. But when I just look at that right there, mm-hmm. uh, there's a lot, visually, there's an image that I think about. And maybe I would research, you know, what does it mean that he, you know, takes the towel off and what did people wear and what's that a sign of and as a servant. But one of the things that stuck with me is in John, you remember in John, the first miracle? The first miracle is Jesus takes uh, water and mm-hmm. turns it into wine after everyone's drunk at a wedding, basically. Or let's say maybe they weren't drunk, but they'd had enough wine. Mm-hmm. Uh, they ran out of wine, which if they ran out of wine is probably a sign they were also drunk. I'm going to argue for that, that they had enough wine, but the people drank too much. And then Jesus takes water. But he doesn't just turn water into wine. He does what? He takes these ceremonial water basins that are for the purification, uh, you know, basically to be clean Mm -hmm. uh, through water, a ritualistic thing. So here we have that this is, you know, basically the last kind of thing that Jesus is doing with his disciples. Mm -hmm. And he doesn't take the water and turn it into wine, but he takes this water. And instead of it being this celebration and marriage and, you know, Mm -hmm. party, it's a different kind of thing. He takes the water and he serves them. Uh, by washing their feet. And you could just focus in on that. We could, if you want, you could just stop here and mm. look at this idea yeah. of um, like so many of our ceremonies mm. we do to serve Jesus, like our liturgies, mm-hmm. our church rituals, ways to you know worship God, yeah. serve God. But we often don't think about that one of the reasons that we gather together on a Sunday or Wednesday or whatever, you know, gather together for Christ is for the purpose of Christ serving us. Mm. That the ritual, the liturgy, is to allow Jesus to serve us. And we're going to see that as we go on. And so often when we talk about the spiritual life, it's what? What do I need to do? Right? What more can I do to serve the Lord? Or how can I be more obedient? It's almost always, or what shouldn't I be doing, Mm -hmm. right? But here is a ritual where it's just Jesus serving us. Mm -hmm. And that's part of our liturgy. Do you make room every day Mm -hmm. for Jesus to serve you? And what does that mean, right? Well, obviously, God is always serving us. Our existence is an expression of God serving us, providing Mm -hmm. this space, this place, um, this life. But we are intentionally called to let God serve us, mm. uh, serve us. The ritual, you know, this ritualistic water is not for the purposes of doing a ritual to help God, but Jesus uses it as a ritual to serve them. It makes me think it, it's even hard for us to remember that on our major, the major holidays that that we celebrate. Yeah. That you know we say have to do with Christ, and that would be like Christmas and Easter, and there it's his very birth, and then his death and resurrection and we can so easily even with those major holidays and major traditions get off course as to understanding the Mm. reason he came into this world first of all and then his death and resurrection and this is to me how theological inquiry works uh i actually wasn't thinking that much about this i've gone through this a few times it's kind of rising up as we're talking and now we can as we're reading on does this theme continue and then that application, that's mm-hmm. that that's an exciting thing to me. Like during, let's say the next big holiday yeah, yeah. for Christmas. What if one of your focuses of Christmas, you know, you know, Jesus is the reason for the season and so I need to honor Jesus. Mm-hmm. What if one of your focuses is to provide space for Jesus to serve mm-hmm. you? Which is a question of, okay, you know, I don't need to go to church and I don't need to hear sermons and I, okay. But how do you make room to be ministered to by God. Mm, that's good. You know, yeah. how, when does Jesus wash your feet? Mm-hmm. Uh, what rituals? You know, the ritualistic water. And Jesus uses the water to mm-hmm. give them wine, which is to serve them. And now he's using water to wash their feet. Um, what rituals do you engage mm-hmm. in that allow God to serve you and for you to truly tangibly, you know, 
feel God's mm -hmm. love. It's one thing there. We could that could be it, right? But yeah. we're gonna go on and see what else we can get out of this. So um, let's go to verse six. So he's getting ready to wash their feet. So he came to Simon Peter, and we know when he comes to Simon Peter, we're going to have sermon content because <laughs> <laughs> Simon has a lot to say and do. So he came to Simon Peter. He said to him, Lord, you are washing my feet. So you can see the context, like what's going on here, Simon saying. Jesus answered and said to him, what I am doing, you do not realize right now, but you will understand later. Wow. <clears throat> Couldn't I apply that to half the stuff that <laughs> happens in life? What I am doing, you do not realize right now, but you will understand later. Holy cow. Okay. This is what I'm excited about this. I didn't Sorry, think about that's that. Probably not no, 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 even wait, wait, please, <laughs> please don't apologize. Or you can't apologize mm -hmm. and I will just not listen to your apology. That's the whole point I want you to get. I've read through this several mm -hmm. times and something else popped out to me. That there is a powerful principle. Mm -hmm. what you, Jesus mm -hmm. says to him, you don't know what I'm doing or why I'm doing, yeah. but later you will. Yeah. And then you drew that how often is that the case for us? Right. I've talked about that so many times in <coughs> women's Bible study. You know how many times I can look back on life and think like, ah, oh, that's that's what God was up to. That's why he was asking to just remain faithful in that time. Or that's why he was asking me to trust in that time. Yeah. Or that's why he was asking me to question or seek <laughs> in that time. But it's so... It can be really upsetting and kind of emotionally tumultuous to be in this place of not understanding. Mm. And that can even take us down some kind of destructive paths if we're not trusting the Lord. And then looking back, I think like, ah, how could I have not had more faith knowing how many times he's brought me to this mm. place of understanding later? Mm. So like in that, that's an idea, a principle. What, what are some things that we get a, uh, in res response to that? What mm. are some applications of that? Um, yeah. I'm thinking the idea of Jesus doesn't wait mm -hmm. for us to understand before he moves. Mm -hmm. That's a principle. Yeah. Often we are, I want to under, once I understand, then God can move. Whether we think that or not, we actually think our spirituality moves forward based Absolutely. on our understanding, yeah. our intellect, but that's not how Jesus operates. So that mm -hmm. means God is going to work in your life regardless of your understanding mm -hmm. before you understand. So there's one. That's a point if you're doing the sermon. Like, what would be another point? Well, even we could say, okay, well, that's true. Maybe he starts doing mm -hmm. something you don't understand. But then if we process it enough, we'll understand. And in this thing, Jesus is saying, today, you're not going to understand what I'm doing. Yeah. And that kind of challenges me because it's one thing to be, we've all been in situations where like, what's going on? Is God doing this? And then we mm -hmm. try to like process it. And I bet you Jesus is saying some to some of us, today, you're not going to understand <laughs> why mm -hmm. I'm doing this. Yeah. Are you comfortable with that? Would you say yes to that? Mm. Jesus tells you relationship to enter into. You're not going to understand why you're in this relationship until many years later. Mm -hmm. You're not going to understand why you took that position or that job, why you said yes to this or no to mm -hmm. that, right? You're just right, right. not going to understand. Yeah, absolutely. So that's a powerful thing, isn't it? And it's also a reminder to me to maybe pause sometimes and take a few minutes and think back on all the times that God has been so, so faithful. Yeah. And to just allow God to remind me of that faithfulness and of the times that I didn't have the understanding, but then later I did. And isn't that more like uh, the parent relationship? Uh, when a parent, let's say a small child, a lot of the stuff you're doing, they don't mm -hmm. understand. Mm -hmm. Like even I always think about babies when they're, they go to sleep and they wake up. And they're in some other environment. They yeah. don't know where they are because we put them in a car and we went somewhere. And they're just kind of going around not really mm -hmm. <laughs> understanding what's coming next, right? And they that's their role. Mm -hmm. And then as they get older, they ask questions to understand. But there's a lot of things they don't. You try your best to explain. But as a parent, you yeah. get there and you say, hey, trust me. Yeah. I'm, you're with me. Right. We're, we're going to be okay. We're doing this, to, you know, where we, we reassure as a parent. And that's what God does with us. He's like, hey. Yeah. Trust me in this. Which should be more the relationship, right? Mm -hmm. That we have a God who meets us. Yeah. But God's bigger, right? So a lot of the stuff God's probably doing, we don't understand. Yep, yep. I mean, if we did, we'd be, you know, in that place of God, right? Yeah. So there's a parent. So again, we could rest there. I'm going to still try to have myself yeah, move on. Moving. If you're like, I want to spend more time there, then go back. Spend some time mm -hmm. there. 
the reality is you'll probably forget it and find something else in that. So let me see. I think there was something I had in that that was different, but I don't know if I want to talk about it right now because that was good. Um, so, yeah, so this verse six. So he came to Simon Peter, said, Lord, you're washing my feet. Jesus answered and said to him, what I'm doing you do not realize right now, but you will understand later. Peter said to him, never shall you wash my feet. So there's... <laughs> A strong, not only do we not understand what God's doing, but we misunderstand and may even fight against with what God's right. doing. Absolutely. Uh, and Peter, I think, believes he's doing something spiritual. Like, this is a test of my faith, and mm, I'm a servant right, of Jesus, right. so I'm going to tell him I'm not going to do that. I'm the, I'm going to serve you. You Never mm. would you serve me. And Jesus answers him, if, you, if I do not wash you, you have no place with me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, then wash not only my feet, but also my hands and my head. And Jesus said, you're still not getting this. He said, he who has bathed needs only to wash his feet. Otherwise, he is completely clean. And you are clean, but not all of you. For he knew that one who was betraying him, it was for this reason that he said, not all of you are clean. So what are some other questions or things you bring to that? One of the things that I think about is, you know, Peter doesn't know what's going on. Mm -hmm. And Peter thinks a good religious zealot, a good religious follower, a good mm -hmm. disciple, um, lowers himself below his master, mm -hmm. below his leader. Right. And Jesus is bringing a pretty radical concept to him that, the only way that you can fully receive my kingdom is if you let me serve you. Right. Absolutely. And I think that's still a principle for Christians. Uh, if you don't let other people serve you, that's a form of pride. Mm. And you might think it's humility. Like, no, 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 no. Let me serve you. Mm. Like, that's the humble thing, right? No, 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 no. I don't want to obligate you. I'll do it. Absolutely. No, no. Let me serve you. Let me bring you a meal. Let me help, you know, clean that. Let me mm -hmm. take your kids to this. Let me give you some money. Let me, you know, that. And you're like, no, 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 no. Let me serve you. That that idea, it looks like, oh, you're being the servant. Yeah. But it's actually a form of pride. It's not allowing Jesus to love you. Mm. And if you're going to allow Jesus to love you, that means you need to allow people to serve you. Mm. Amen. It's not the same as you better serve me because, and there's people like that, like, who are upset that you're not loving them the way they want to love, you know, they want demanding Jesus to do things through you. That's not what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about Peter's heart. That Peter's inclination is no one needs to serve me. And that's not a bad inclination, right? right? Yeah. Peter's, I'm supposed to serve. Mm -hmm. But it's a bad inclination when it comes to Jesus. That Peter has to humble himself mm -hmm. by doing something that looks like pride to him. Yeah. That he's going to let his leader mm -hmm. serve him, which makes it look like Peter's the leader. Yeah. So you understand that issue. And I've met, this is one of the issues people raised in religious environments. I, I struggle this with my parents sometimes over where it was very hard for them to receive love. Mm. If you serve them, they still want to serve you back. You know? Yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. But that actually is how they can receive love is no dad we want to do this mm -hmm. and for you to experience God's love, you need to let us do that. And we need to do that for them as well. Mm -hmm. Jenna and I are in dependent places in ministry. There's been times in ministry up to this place where we've had to let other people serve us. Mm -hmm. We've had to let other people provide financially so we could survive and do the ministry we're called to do. That's hard. Mm -hmm. Part of me doesn't want to do that. Yeah, no, my flesh definitely battles against that. And it is, you know, related to pride. Yeah. And also this just like sense of self-sufficiency. And I will struggle with self-sufficiency, not only when it comes to God, where I would rather take care of it myself, but also when it comes to his people yeah. and not allowing us to be served. Because Jesus is working in people around you mm -hmm. and God's working in people around you. And when God is trying to love you through someone else and mm -hmm. you reject that, you're cutting yourself off from the kingdom. Now, Jesus says, this is very important. I'm going to serve you through dying for your sins. And, because, and if you're not going to let me do that, you're not going to have any part of my kingdom. Because this story is not going to be about how great you are, Peter. This yeah. story is going to be about that Jesus is the servant of all. Mm -hmm. uh, but at every level, for some of us, like you might even feel a little like distant from God or 
and God is ministering to you, but it's mm. through people that you don't want to let serve you. Hmm. And that means like this, when someone says, you know what, I want you to know how proud I am of you. <laughs> you know what a, a Christ-like response is, is instead of going, oh, you know, don't be proud of me, be proud of Jesus. Just say thank you That's and good. let that person serve you. Yeah. Let Jesus serve you through. I just want you to know, you know, uh, that what you did was, that was a really good thing. Well, no, no, not don't lift up me, lift up Jesus. No, actually, the lifting up Jesus is allowing someone to bless you. Hmm. It's allowing someone to encourage you. It's allowing someone to say something nice about you and to say, thank you. Amen. Uh, yes, I praise Jesus too. <laughs> uh, but that's hard. If you cut yourself off from that, you you isolate yourself. Jesus is like, for, I would just think for someone here, to learn to receive from your children mm. that that role of well i'm the parent and so i'm going to serve and i know like you have to sometimes let your kids pay for the meal mm. even if it's harder on them than you because christ has told them to do that mm. and you need to allow christ mm. to love you through your kids or your neighbor or even through somebody who maybe isn't that christ-like mm. to you and like, I'm not going to take anything from that person because, you know, well, if they've heard Christ mm -hmm. and they're doing one good thing, even if they've done 10 bad mm -hmm. things before that, you can still let them bless yeah. you. We see this with how Jesus treats Judas. He receives everything Judas can give him, even though he knows ultimately Jesus, Judas will betray him. I mean, it's really about trusting Jesus in other people, right? Yeah. And then it's allowing them to draw close to Jesus themselves. I mean, I know for me, when I really feel like I've heard from the Lord to do something, I want somebody else to receive what that is, yeah. because then that's a confirmation even of Jesus working in and through me. And like, oh, I did hear from the Lord yeah. in this. Yeah. Um, and we can't always be responsible for, you know, opening and closing those doors of other people's faith in action. But we can, to the best of our ability, try to draw close to the Lord and listen to his wisdom. As Peter is having to do in the scripture, yeah. I just think like how close, like in actual proximity he is to his Lord and Savior in this scripture. But he's really like spiritually having to draw even closer and get over his own preconceived notions of what yeah. these words even mean that Jesus is using to get to the spiritual implications of what Jesus is saying. So we could go in that whole area and see the service. There's another thing in this passage that hits me that I think is interesting is Peter, it's amazing how Peter goes to this really spiritual thing that is not what Jesus is doing, which just oh, hits me. Right, it's, right. It's, this yeah. is a really good scripture for super religious people mm. because Peter goes, don't wash my feet. And then Jesus goes, you know, I, I must do that for you to be clean. And then mm. Jesus is like, oh, then make my whole body clean. Wash my whole body. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And Jesus goes, this isn't about your holiness. Yeah. This is about your feet are dirty. Mm -hmm. I want to say that again. He's, he's like, this isn't about your heart towards me or your spiritual connection with mm. me or it's I'm going to serve you. And when people come into a house, they've mm. got dirty feet because we wear these sandals and we have this ritual cleaning our feet and I'm going to do it. It's that. That's it. Yeah. He limits it. He actually says no. And then he says, though, now there are there is one here who's not spiritually clean. And Judas mm -hmm. is not in a good place. But that's not what I'm talking about. That's a message right there. Yeah. Absolutely. Because so often we have these, you know, you're going to serve people so they can find Jesus mm -hmm. for everything. And this is just Jesus saying, you know what? I'm just going to serve them. Yeah. Somebody needs their feet washed. Mm -hmm. I'm going to do it. Why? So that their soul can be clean? No. So good. I'm just going to serve them. Yes. Yeah. And that helps me. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't know. Uh, some people are pretty hard to understand spiritually. But regardless, mm -hmm. find a way to serve. Amen. And not to serve so you can change their spiritual condition. Like mm -hmm. Jesus isn't serving to change Judas's heart or anyone's heart. He's just come to serve. Yeah. When I get stuck, this helps me. By the way, I tend to preach this more than I live it. And every time I preach it, I'm like, Doug, you should do this more. <laughs> but if ever you get stuck with anybody, because people will reject your spirituality. They'll, you know, 
it's just weird. It just becomes weird. You talk about Jesus, they stop talking to you. You know, you, you just know, you know, there's something there. You don't know what to do with it. And this is hard, particularly if it's close people, family, friends, neighbors, coworkers, where you can't like avoid each other, but your existence seems to be somehow like a threat to them or a inconvenience or just it's awkward. Pray about ways to serve. Now, they might not receive that. They might be, you don't need to what? Buy donuts for the office. I don't know what it is. That can be serving. Yeah. Hmm, you know, I'm out on a break. Got myself a donut. I guess I'll get everybody else. That might actually be harming people getting donuts. But I'm going to assume <laughs> it's a good thing to serve them. You know, whatever that is. This frees you up. And it also tells you the power. Jesus, we're going to get on here. Jesus talks about how important this is. Mm -hmm. And Jesus doesn't say, as I have just preached a message to you, you should go preach a message to others. Mm -hmm. Now, he talks about proclaiming the message. But this is the Last Supper. It's one of the most important things he's going to say to the disciples. Yeah. And what he's focusing in on is one of the simplest things that we can mm. do, which is to serve. Wow, that's good. So that moves us forward. It also mm -hmm. puts in context the motivation of our heart. Yeah. And as a pastor who likes to do the spiritual things and likes it when people tell me how great the Wednesday night was or the this is a little different because mm -hmm. people aren't usually, that was amazing the way you washed that person's feet, right? That's just serving. So there's so much you could yeah, get in that. So much. Is there anything else? No, nope, like, nope, go ahead. I, I just, all right. I'm being encouraged as we go along here. So the rest of you, you know, catch up. So uh, let's go. What do we got here? So uh, eight, never shall you wash my feet. Then... 10, he says, he who has bathed needs only to wash his feet. Otherwise, he is completely clean. And you are clean, but not all of you. For he knew that one was betraying him. It was for this reason he said, not all of you. So let's go to 12. Uh, then when he had washed their feet and taken his garments and reclined at the table again, he said to them, do you know what I've done for you? Mm. You call me teacher and Lord, and you are correct, for so I am. So if I, the Lord and teacher, washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's mm, feet. Amen. For I gave you an example so that you also would do just as I did for you. Mm -hmm. Now, as I look at that, and I'm separating it from the rest, and this goes together, this really challenges me with how I assess ministry success. Mm -hmm. Uh, Jesus is saying to his disciples, this is Last Supper. This is, uh, I'm not going to have much more time with you. This is what I want you to remember about mm -hmm. what your role is. And we could talk about, he's giving an example of what Jesus did, you know, going to the cross, serving. But Jesus just turns it right around on the disciples and said, mm -hmm. this is why I've called you. I haven't called you for political power. I haven't called you for cultural power. I haven't called you for religious power. I've called you so that you could be loved and see what love is. Mm -hmm. And this is love to serve. Yeah. And that's what you're going to do. It's so good. This is what your master does. And so that's what you're going to do. Mm -hmm. And uh, if people want to know me, they will know me through how you serve. Amen. Wow. It's powerful. Not how people respond to your yeah. service. Yeah. Yeah just to serve. Mm -hmm. And this also, what's our expectation of God? It's our, what's our expectation? Here's what I get from this. Jesus says, this is what your expectation should be, Doug. Opportunities to serve. Mm -hmm. Are you getting opportunities to serve others? No. Yeah. Well, there you go. Mm -hmm. You're a pastor. Okay, but I, you know, I... I'm not getting to, invited to speak at denominational conventions. Okay. Do you have opportunities to serve? Do you have opportunities to be the least of these? Not not to be the least of these to be something else, but just to be the least of these. Have anybody heard the term servant leadership? I get the concept, servant leadership. It sounds great. But really, we should just not even have leadership in there. I'm just servant. Because even servant leadership says, you know, I'm going to serve so I can be a leader. But I'm going to be at this. Yeah, yeah. It's like, how do you become a good leader? Well, you mm -hmm. serve. The very need to be the leader mm -hmm. kind of puts into question the servant. But Jesus just says, you're just servants. Mm -hmm. It makes me think about all the times that people have told me stories about folks that they're 
praying for and that they are ministering to and that they're reaching out to, whether it's that family member who doesn't know the Lord or it's that neighbor who's maybe difficult or it's that coworker that they've sat next to for years and years. And there's almost like this apologetic of like, well, they still don't, you know, they still haven't come around to the Lord or they still haven't. But that success, I think yeah. about that success of serving and praying and ministering to that person. And that that's what faith mm. is. I mean, mm. that's what Jesus is seeing when we do serve others that way. And when we reach out to others in that way, is that faithfulness and to do it for like years or to contend you know, for it with so much energy and, and so much love that that's successful yeah. ministry and successful faith right there. Well, that's a great point. And I think some of you are thinking about it's where one spouse, when we say unbelieving, there's all sp spouses who are hostile, but there's also just you're spiritually involved and your spouse doesn't have anything to do with the church, right? There's, you know, whether they have a faith or conviction or value, and there's a whole spectrum there. But sometimes we have this idea, well, you know, you need to love and serve them so we can get them to the church. And okay, maybe. But really, the church is you serving them. Mm -hmm. Especially if you've been called to love them. You know, you're called to be in that marriage, yeah. you know. And it's not a secondary thing. Mm -hmm. It's Last Supper Jesus stuff. Yeah. Where you are. And you're not doing it to get something. Mm -hmm. You're not doing it to say, well, look how important I am. I shouldn't have to be serving you, but I am. Yeah. But you're just loving the person and mm -hmm. serving them and treating them as best as you know how mm -hmm. and being Christ to them. And I just want, you know, when I, that picture where after Jesus serves them, he puts the clothes back on, he just kind of goes back, you know. It's been a long day mm -hmm. probably, probably lots of work, right? <sighs> you know, takes some Like you get to do that with Jesus. Mm -hmm. You get to the end of the night, sit mm -hmm. back and go, yeah, look over and go, and Jesus would say, well done. That's good. That's what I called you to. I'm, you're not God. You're yeah. not, you, you don't die for the sins of the world, mm -hmm. but you're not greater than me. Mm -hmm. And so I haven't given you a menial task. I've given you a sacred task. We sometimes prop up the wrong people. We shouldn't prop up anybody, but we prop up the person with the successful marriage or the successful family, whatever that is, family or successful church. But servants are the ones we should really mm. model ourselves after. I don't know. Let's pick, let's pick a name. I'm just going to say the word Kim. It's not tied to anyone. <laughs> Kim. You just bring Kim to the front of the church mm. say, uh, Kim's amazing. Uh, and she doesn't even know why she's up here because she didn't want to be up here. She's not doing it for this. And in right. fact, it's going to be awkward. But Kim is a servant. Mm. She's been serving her husband. How long have you been married, Kim? Is it 25 years? And she just serves him. Uh, why do you do that? You know, are you trying to get him to come to church? What's the reason? You just serve and love him. You know, that's mm. the reality. Uh, I'm I'm using very Anglo white Jim. I was going to use Jim. Like I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I guess I'm a white dude who's got generic names. Sorry about that. But let's get a Jim. You know, Jim's been serving his drug addicted son for years and his son's 34 years old and still serving him loving him but he's not a success because his son is still addicted you know in the eyes of the world he can't write the book yet because his son's mm -hmm. still he can't do the testimony because he can't stand with his son and but is he not successful mm -hmm. yeah or maybe he's the best example of christ in the world right now mm -hmm. Someone who's opening his heart to love and serve his son as best as he knows how. Amen. To remove the towel and to wash his feet mm -hmm. and to serve him. Amen. Even though his son should be serving him, he's loving as Jesus loves. So there's so much in that, isn't there? Yeah. Man. And not to condemn you. If, if this is like, oh, I got to do this to please God. That's not. Jesus just says, I've called you and this is what I do. And so you get to do it too. It's an assignment. I don't know. Just like this, you you just showed up to work or you showed up to the family gathering, whatever you want it to be, right? You got out of bed, mom and dad are down the hall and they're like, all right, this is what we're going to do today. And that's what Jesus is saying right now. Jesus is like, I am serving others. Join me. You want to join me? I'm ser I've am i come to serve. And if you want to be associated with me and use my name and everything, I'd really like it if you do what I do, which is to serve. So let's, let's get through more of this and 
There's this whole other thing I want to talk about. I don't think I'm going to get to oh. it, but that's okay. Wait, I don't want to force it because this, Next Wednesday. this is all good. Uh, okay, so 12, then when he had washed their feet, taken his garment, reclined at the table again, he said to them, do you know what I have done for you? And they probably all should have said, we have no idea. But <laughs> right. It'll be written down and, and <laughs> others will figure it out. <laughs> you call me teacher and Lord and you are correct for so I am. So if I, the Lord and teacher, washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I gave you an example so that you also would do just as I did for you. Truly, truly, I say to you, a slave is not greater than his master, nor is one who is sent greater than the one who sent him. If you know these things, you are blessed if you do them. I'm not speaking about all of you. I know the ones whom I have chosen, but this is happening so that the scripture may be fulfilled. He who eats my bread has lifted up his heel against me. From now on, I'm telling you before it happens so that when it does happen, you may believe that I am he. Truly, truly, I say to you, the one who receives anyone I send receives me. And the one who receives me receives him who sent me. Now that verse 20, mm. we could focus on. I just want to close with this. We could focus on this in many different ways. But let's read that again mm. and see what comes to your mind, even in light of all the stuff we've talked about. Truly, truly, I say to you, the one who receives anyone I send receives me. And the one who receives me receives him who sent me. I get the mm. second part. You know, if you receive... Jesus, you're receiving the Father, mm -hmm, you know, so that. Mm -hmm. But the first part here, uh, the one who receives anyone I send mm -hmm. receives me. I hadn't paid attention to that before. He mentions the one I send, but what has he said before this? He said, here's your assignment. Mm -hmm. He said, you know what I've just done? You don't know, but here's the issue. Uh, I'm the master. Mm -hmm. You're not. I, you're, you're the servants of the slave. And what I've done, you cannot do more than what I've done. You are called to do what I've done. Mm -hmm. And I've come to serve. Yeah. Now go serve. So what is a sign that someone has been sent by God? Mm. They're a servant. Yeah. Yeah. He's including us. That's why I know people do this with leaders who are working on behalf of God. In this New Testament era, somebody who's not a servant, and leading the charge for Christianity has not been sent by God. Mm. Or if they've been sent by God, they're no longer listening to God. Mm. I don't care if it's a political leader, a social leader, religious leader. The ones sent by God are servants. Mm. That's powerful. Are the ones who remember why they were sent mm -hmm. are servants. Because we can all lose sight yeah. of yeah. what we're called to Absolutely. do. Absolutely. And so who do we receive? We receive the servants. And that's why it's very important to me that we need to look around and see who are the people who are serving. Mm. And we need to make sure we are really receiving their service, mm. valuing their service, that's respecting good. their service, yeah. honoring their service. Because as we honor and mm. respect and receive those who mm -hmm. served, we're honoring and respecting and receiving Jesus. And we often don't. We often overlook the servant because especially that the quiet servants that are doing their work under the Lord yeah. and then we just kind of assume that those people are just supposed to be that way and you know they're not causing any trouble and so we don't I don't know we just don't pay attention I think yeah it's this is a it just this came to my mind now is this is helpful for those of you who you have not been valued for mm -hmm. your service. Uh, if you're in a marriage where your spouse is taking advantage of your servant's heart, they are in a dangerous place. They are rejecting Jesus and they're rejecting the Father. Mm -hmm. And that's not a good place to be in. So just to remember that, that they're not just rejecting you or devaluing you. They're devaluing their creator and rejecting their creator. So it's a dangerous thing to be in a place where we don't receive those who've come as servants. Yeah. When we devalue, when we harm, abuse in our culture, mm -hmm. like those who are working the hardest to serve our economy should be greatly respected. If they're not, we're not respecting Jesus. Yeah. So a a country that doesn't value and respect, you know, the migrant worker 
person working 12 hours a day with hardly making anything and surviving, living in a hut, serving us so that we can have cheap you know, vegetables and fruit. Uh, we're rejecting Jesus. Mm -hmm. Now, I know even I go down this line, you're like, well, who can stand? I know we stand because of the grace of God, but at least should bring us to this idea mm -hmm. of how we view the servants in our culture. Amen, amen. You know, yeah. the people who gain fame and we, you know, who do we honor? The people who've already received their reward. Mm -hmm. We honor wealthy people and give them plaques and trophies and name buildings after them. And we honor successful athletes and successful musicians and successful entertainers. And we give them Emmys and awards and Oscars and, you know, all that benefits them. I'm, you know, fine, I guess. There's movies we like and actors we like and we can give them awards. But we're called to look for the servants. Mm -hmm. We're called to look for the roadie who got all the, you know, the sound equipment right so that your famous musician could sing or mm. the the gaffer, the guy who holds the boom mic in the movies. Oh, I just made our boom mic and I changed the picture the of the lighting. <laughs> uh, in the church context, the mm -hmm. person who uh, is working hard in the nursery or greeting people at the door mm -hmm. at the parking lot, right? It's really an upside down world, isn't mm -hmm. it? Where's Jesus right now? Like if you're losing heart, like where's Jesus? Jesus isn't at that stump speech that you heard that politician mm -hmm. say, you know, maybe, maybe hear a little bit of Jesus. The narcissistic, egocentric politician. Jesus is found in those who are serving. They're feeding the poor. They're providing housing at night. They're, they're doing the night shift. Mm -hmm and uh, helping drug addicts or helping people with mental illness find shelter or just people who are dehoused because this economy is killing them mm. the servants mm. uh, they're everywhere we have to find them mm -hmm. you know there's there's bad policemen but there's also policemen serving and mm -hmm. and we need to find them the ones who are spending time and talking to at-risk youth or mm -hmm. taking the extra effort to have a friendly discussion with someone that they pull over who might be driving too fast, but still trying to serve the populace, keep things safe, but serve the person mm -hmm. that they've pulled over. They're there. Mm -hmm. I don't know how many are there. And I get it. There's terrible pastors, but there's some trying to serve. And there's terrible teachers, but there's some trying to serve. And, and there's teachers' aides, right? Mm -hmm. In home health care, there's people cleaning up elderly people when, when they need to be cleaned and washed and bathed. And, and some are really trying to serve mm -hmm. someone else's grandma or grandpa. Where's Jesus? Mm -hmm. Jesus is working right now, and he is serving us. Amen. And we need to find him mm -hmm. and maybe join him. Mm -hmm. So that's some of the stuff we can get out of that. Isn't that fun what that's scripture really does? Yeah. I hope if you feel condemned, I'm sorry, that's not my job to make you, I don't want to make you feel bad. To me, it's opportunity. Yeah, I feel excited about looking for opportunities to serve where I haven't been looking yeah. to serve. And you know what it makes me think of? And I know we're going long here, but hey, you know what? You could turn it off. You don't want to. Um, as I'm going through this, I'm thinking about your servant's heart. Like you, this is to me a sign of a servant. I'm just gonna say this, you can't fight against this, okay? You cannot, I love talking about service, but I don't know how much of a servant I am. My wife is a servant. And the sign I know that is as she's listening to this, instead of going like, I'm really a servant, she's like, I need to serve more. That's the nature of, and as I'm preaching this, I'm thinking, man, I really need to praise Jennifer for all the ways she serves others in the church without expectations, just because she serves and to acknowledge Jesus in her hmm. as she serves. And that's the thing. The people who are really serving are often the people who don't even think it's service. And it would be nice if he came alongside them and said, thank you. Thank you for loving and serving others. All right. Thanks for not. I, I forced <laughs> I her. I was going to say thank you. And Good. it makes me think of all the people that I need to thank. Yeah. So and you're just going to turn who, into things you need to do. And all the people who have come alongside me. Yeah. And how amazing that is. All right. I gave you permission that we can all grow and do. Yeah. yeah that's what God does. And that's, grow. but the, by the way, that's how the kingdom of God works. You want more of it. It's mm -hmm. like, it's to me, it's a, a gifting activated in you. Why is that exciting too? Is God's like, yeah. And you're seeing there's mm -hmm. fruit to that and there's goodness in that. Yeah. So whether someone doesn't serve at all or serves a lot, you're like, yeah, more. This Amen. is good. I want to be with you, Jesus, right? Absolutely. I want to be with you. Mm -hmm. All right. 
Thank you. I think this was good, wasn't it? Yeah, just shake your head like, Dora, I need you to do that. <laughs> um, and uh, I just want you to be encouraged. Yeah. You're not alone. You're not forsaken. This world is terrible because people do terrible things. But it's also beautiful because mm. Jesus is alive. Amen. And people who choose to follow him. Amen. And so let's find where Jesus is ministering and working. You won't feel alone. Mm -hmm. You'll have purpose and meaning in your life. And it'll help you deal with the terrible stuff too. It's really okay? good. All Amen. right. Laura, we thank you for your presence. We thank you for your word. Mm -hmm. We thank you for your encouragement. We just thank you for how scripture is so beneficial. Thank you, Jesus. It is so beneficial. Help us to just see and understand that we could be fed a thousand so times good. over just by one chapter thank you lord help us to value your word amen to, thank to, you lord i know lord so i just see i do this too mm -hmm. christians are in their opinions thank about scripture and we just need to read your word and bring life to people mm -hmm. And we are so, we think our words are so important. And, and you just gave the example. Mm -hmm. You didn't come in and preach a message. You said, I just did something. I just washed your feet. Mm -hmm. And that's what I want you to do. So we just yeah. receive that. We know every single person can receive this message. We don't have to have a great intellect, intellectual capacity. We don't have to have fancy words. We can all serve. Amen. There's feet we can wash. There's floors we can scrub. Mm -hmm. There's people we can bless. Praise God. We thank, thank you for you, all Lord. this in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. Good word. Good I was supposed to make this about just saying how much I love you. Oh, yeah. No, you were not. So uh, I did. she's pretty amazing, isn't she? <sighs> and I'm the only one who knows how to shut this thing down. So I know. She can't. Okay. I think you I can figure, figure it out. It out. Yeah. Oh, don't. No. Oh. <laughs> it was too good to be deleted. All right, you guys. Love you. Make room for the Lord.